Welcome back, folks. We're back for map number two between Game and Gladiators and Team One. Game and Gladiators, well, if they win, they play spoiler and Team One go to the relegation zone. They will have to play in the relegation tournament to stay alive. But if Team One win, they make a spot in playoffs. I'm Boggs, joined by Laz and Jacob Halfman, our producer tonight. Yeah, there's uh, no arms or gun for Maluk. Always love Go TV bugs. They never fail to amaze me. <laughs> he's got a crosshair, but nothing else. At least he's got a crosshair. But it's a B train here from Game and Gladiators, and Maluk's already on the flank, too. He's ready to just bust them from behind, put them down through the gray, takes one down on the backside. That's Carson to fall. Pace it a little stuck back towards church. IDK in towards spawn, but pace it down. Maluk with two kills apiece now. All down to George, stuck in emo. And he's going to be mad about that one. He's going to be mad about that one, isn't he? Knife comes through. Maluk can get an op in round number two. It's so hard to know, too, because I was like, man, that movement, it looks he's got the blade out, man. He's ready to go down. He's ready to have a knife at a gunfight. Oh, my goodness. What a round. And, I mean, I got to bring it up again. I know I said this before, but you know what? I'll do it again. Pay Sadello. What on earth did this guy have today? Like, he is just picking up these big kills. I mean, the fact he gets two of them, gets the assist from his teammate and the Maluk, the one player you want to have some money, gets a knife kill at the end. Oh, man, Team 1 are fired up from that first game. They're fired up, and they know what's at stake. That spot in playoffs is what they want. They missed out on it last season, if memory serves me right. And that's an uncharacteristic miss for a Team 1 squad that... It always seems to make it into playoffs. Here comes a... What the? What just happened? Everything, apparently. Well, an op is on the board. It's gone. It's gonna get picked up. I think. Uh... uh oh, okay. okay. I was like... I was like, uh... Mobs, what are you doing? What, what are you... What are you going for? I don't know what the plan is. But if anybody's curious, we were just, there was an issue with the gun, right? We couldn't see it, we didn't know what he was doing, so we had to restart. We had to do a little bit of a tweak, a little bit of a modification, just so you get the best experience. But you know what? Talking about experiences, Team 1 have had an 0-5 streak on this map. So not only are they looking to get the W for a 2-0, they're looking to put a little bit of redemption back in their map of Inferno. It's been a bit rough in the history. Yeah, that's not what you want to see if you are a team one. You want to get back at the win column. They're due for a win. So, Game and Gladiators, they might have some great metrics on this map, but they have to put it in their favor. They have to actually win the round, win the map. They win about 54.4% of their T-sided rounds, 58.8 on CT. So we can expect a decent T-side out of this squad, but the pistols have not worked out for them. They are 0-3 on pistols so far. And that could be a problem. I mean, if you look at how Nuke ended. Two rounds separating, or three rounds technically, separating the two teams. That's it. That's two pistols and the ensuing rounds. Literally flipped the scoreline. Ooh, so, good Molotov. That is a good Molly. He was ready to go for it, so now they're just going to rush together. Ooh, another Molly Maluk. He's locked oh! and he gets the collab! It's beautiful! <laughs> Oh, it's poetry. It's artwork, and there it is. It's clean. I know it's an eco, but man, does he make it look good. No op. He lost the op. He threw the op away oh. so he can grab a different gun. Well, not poetry anymore. He's got it back, but that's expensive. That's a big reinvestment. Forty-seven fifty. That's a blunder. That's a big blunder. We'll see if it leads to him losing a queen or a king here. Nah, he's gonna take out Carson anyways, just swing it out. He's got a lot of momentum and... Well, as he finished with just about 30 kills last map, he's already at seven. Three rounds into the game, you're on Inferno. Yeah, he's seven and two, and he's still trying to do more work. Oh my lord, he's able to get out of there though, so now he's able to fall back. He's still gonna keep aggressing. He's playing an aggressive spot. Now Gaming Gladiators trying to get the bracket control. And you already have the two players in the lane. They're going to fall back. So now you have Pesadello going for the rotate. It's a four on four. I mean, the HP side kind of favors here. Gaming, Gaming Gladiators, sorry. And Bob's now on the site. He gets the spot of Cynic and he goes for the jump. 
Oh, they haven't cleared this, but he's fully blind. Now they've run by him. Oh my god, the trigger discipline. They haven't cleared the corners, but he is able to lose a teammate. But there he is. One, two, and the bomb's going to be dropped. Peekaboo, there you are, Mulbs. And he's finally spotted a Ghostbuster. will take him. It's down to just one lonely player. It's Maluk with an op. He has to come alive. He's done some good work. Can he do this again? Will he be able to find more? I don't know, and it will not be in the deck of cards. It will not be in the deck. It will not work out for Maluk and the Game and Gladiators. But it's definitely not a round the Game and Gladiators can really rest easy on right there. It comes down to the wire. And the Game and Gladiators are going to have a MAC-10 here. It's not going to be a pretty buy for Team 1 either, especially because they had to reinvest into the op last round. So they'll have a couple of M4s of Hamas, uh, Deagle, and the MP9. No kit either for the CT side. Carson leading the charge, though. Down goes one of those rifles. Down goes both. Carson jumping around through the smoke, spraying and praying. And he gets rewarded quite nicely. IDK picks up the M4 now, already has one on the Deagle. Well, Luke trying to get a little antsy. Pushes forward, taken down by George, who does take quite a bit of damage in return for that kill. Good damage onto both Seneca and Jazz Pimp there, but looks like an HE there. And, well, that flashbang did not exactly go where George wanted it to. That was a top mid flash and did not blind TRK, who's still around top mid. That's a good easy kill onto George, though, low HP as he is. IDK has to hold the line from Coffins. A couple of kills could be possible. Only one. TRK, 1v2. This is winnable. The bomb very early in its plant. Timer. The nade. How he uses this is going to be critical. Yeah, he's got one HE. And he's going to have to find it. But these players aren't low enough that he's going to be able to get the kill. But at least he can wound them. He can do something with it. Oh, he's got the right nade placement. Jazz taking down to 40. That's a big chunk. But TRK, he's waiting a bit too long. And he doesn't even have a kit. So now he will have to fall back. But I think the one piece for him is he could go all the way through middle, try to pick up one of those guns. Yeah, the AK's He's got down the time, top mid. but that's going to be B-Wells. B-Wells might catch him. B-Wells might find him. There he goes. And he's able to get that kill on the round. And we're just one round away from a tie. Tie ball game is what Game and Gladiators want. They want to put on a big scoreline on the T side because Team 1 statistics 47.3 on CT, 41.4 on T. If that does not inspire confidence, that is the correct reaction. It's a team that struggles on Inferno, both sides of the map. In Team 1, they got off to a good start by winning Pistol, yes. But the Game and Gladiators love this map. There's a reason why they picked it. It's their most played map. And it's also their highest win percentage by a significant margin. 3 on A, 2 on B. Double up towards Porch. Behind the smoke, they could go for the little boost. Maluk's going to go over top. as a bit of an angle. But it's a slow and steady round for the game in Gladiators. They're feeling everything out. They don't want to give anything over for free to Team 1. They want to make sure they don't run into a pistol stack here. It's a good idea. It's a good discipline call from the game in Gladiators. But they do have to make a move soon because time is quickly running out. And actually, what's, what's an emo stack? And he gets the bomb down. That's the bomb drop. That kill alone well, no, is now no, dropped the carrier. That was out um bedroom. That was just them shuffling the bomb around bedroom. Oh, okay. Well, either way, nice kill. What? Ooh, TRK, TRK, okay. He's able to find coin kill. Maluk taking out George to 2 HP. Now Jazz is going to have to hope that he can do the heavy lifting on this one. He's going to have to spot his teammate. And now we'll have to see... Gaming Gladiators have to hold this! Jazz is able to find two! It's just down to Pacedello now. He's just got a USB. The one flash comes in. Looking to find something. It's a MAC-10. This could work. Not the though. gun you want in this kind of a situation. Actually, it might work. George is a one-shot. Jaspim's a two-shot. Run and gun. Just don't get hit. Yeah, there's no kit, though. Oh, it's over. Yeah, you're right. It's, he's no just time. being the time. But now he's going to go for the kills. As soon as he hears them run, he's going to go for the peak. Look at this. He should get this kill. Easy done. Wait for the bomb to explode. Run back. Try to get a gun if he can. Just kidding. He's going to get taken out. He's not far enough. And uh, that's all she wrote. We're right back to an even game here, Bugs. Even Stevens, it's three all. 
Almost thought Jasmine had it again for a second, and I got scared. It's just the M4A1S. <laughs> but Moss for Malbs. M4s for the rest of the squad over on Team 1. Malbs taking the hit to buy a kit. Thank you, Malbs. Thank you for buying a good defuse kit. Yeah, don't let us go on that rant again. Yeah, that's a public service announcement. That is a PSA. Yeah, Cynic's hearing them. Oh my gosh, they're making so much noise. He oh, can get the kills. What? Cynic! Cynic! Oh, he's going to have to use a Q-tip more often. I can't believe he didn't hear that. He didn't react to that. What on earth? And now they're going to go back into mid-bracket. So they've given up the B control, so now they're going to go once more for the A. But this is three players still here from Team 1. you got IDK holding the tight angle, able to get that kill. Bomb still obtained here, though. George Nell coming through lane. Maluk on the tall ground. Now he's looking for a bit more. Flash comes in. He's able to find that one, too. Oh, man, he's just having a field day. He's looking for more, but he's got to get his gun out. You don't need the utility. You can just pop off, and now they keep this lead going. They keep the lead going, they minimize their casualties, they only lose one player. It's great for Team 1 and the opposite for Game and Gladiators. That was a free double kill for Cynic. That was a free double kill for Cynic if he takes the fight towards Porch. I just don't get it. I don't either. I'm at a loss. It's mistakes like that that cost Game and Gladiators on Nuke. They can't afford to lose this map. If they lose this map, they're done. They're out 2-0. Yeah, they're on the T side, but it's opportunities like that that can change the momentum of a game, that can change the overall scope of the series. Yeah, really He could. overswings that too towards port or towards Cubby. He doesn't need to. He, he has the himself. angle. Yeah. He has the angle where he can't get swung there. Unless they full on wide swing. And at that point, you've at least gone one for one and your job is done. I'll we'll have to see if the job can get done now. The gladiators grouped up together as a unit. Throws the smoke? Question mark. Flash comes in. I don't think that's what he meant to do, but he's going to be able to pick up some kills so it won't matter. Mobs now on the spray. He's looking to see if he can make it a triple. He will not, but his teammates are there to help him. A helping hand, and now one casualty, which will be Pesa. And Boggs, I gotta know, was that a strategic throw? Was that a fake throw? Like, I don't get it. Uh, or yes. Just, uh... Yes, I'm gonna go with yes. Okay. I'm not gonna fathom something on there. I'm I just, just gonna... I just, yeah, that, that blew me away. I was like, wait, a, wait a second, what is he doing? Why is he, why is he throwing that away? Why, what, you need that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, what's going on anymore. I'm a bit lost. I think, uh, I think I hopped on a vest button, went somewhere else, because, well, this round at least is normality. It's a good aggressive anti-pistol round here from Team One, mowing them all down. But. It... Oof. All right. Breaking news. Dun, 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 dun. Well, God sent. 2 0. Yeah. Strong shocked? 2 0 over Brazen. I'm not. Not at all. Me neither. Now, I'm shocked about the 16 1, but the overall scoreline 2 0, I think that was kind of the expected result. God sent over Brazen there. But again, all that matters here for Team 1 is a win sends him into playoffs. A win tonight for Team 1 will get them into playoffs 100%. That's a trade to start this off. This could get messy here. TRK backing onto the site A. He's by himself. He only has a flash to work with. Dude, that smoke. He has to it actually alive. worked to keep him alive. He's going to swing wide out into the open and... He didn't need to peek that at all. He could have bought time for the rotation of the loot to come through. He spotted out one in mini, but the bomb can cross to the site. Actually, never mind. It's up in Palace or 
apartments, rather. This could be messy, and Mobs comes through only good for one, but look at Pesadello. Look at Pesadello! Knife in the back! Drop the bomb! He could do it all! All he has to do is stop the bomb plant and back away, but they're gonna plant on site. He holds too long. They've seen him now, and he only has a smoke to work with. That one's not gonna do much at all. Great shot on a Jazz Pimp. Great swing by Carson to trade it back. Four to six now. Game and Gladiators starting to close that gap a little bit more. Six is what they want. Seven would be good. Eight would basically give us overpass, almost guaranteed. And, you know, the thing we're noticing, too, from Team 1 is they're going in these peaks. Like, they're switching to utility. Like, they're not even clearing corners, and they're, like, jiggle peeking with, like, a smoke or a nade. Like, I don't get it, but it's a bit messy. But you can see that was trigger discipline, but that was just too much trigger discipline that happened through. But now Maluk going to get a bit more aggressive, a change of pace now from Team 1. Now getting that first kill, now falling back. George taken out. And he's actually one of the top fraggers. Actually, is the top fragger of this team, so that's a great pickup. So we'll see what else they can do. Double boost or one boost onto the half wall. Now Team 1, of, uh, they're trying to be the team push now. Yeah, I like the aggression, though. It, it's good on Inferno sometimes to take those peaks. It makes the T-side really slow down and think. And when Gaming Gladiator slowed down too much on Nuke, it was a great string of rounds for Team 1, where they just continued to dominate. So, it's a good effective strategy for Team 1 here. The boost doesn't work, but, I mean, it's not like Gaming Gladiator's players can hear it anyways, so it doesn't even matter. Nade's gonna come through. They have heard that one at the very least. Jazz Pimp around the corner. The smoke will fade momentarily. Does not peek it dry. Should not peek it dry. But he could get peeked by Maluk, who's creeping forward. There's a double up in bracket. Maluk falls back. Flashbang goes in. Maluk scopes back. He's good for one, but only one. 4v3 to the favor of Team 1. IDK sitting behind that library. Smoke could spam him down. Beebles brings it to a level footing. Flashbang will actually... Was that a decoy? Either way, IDK's got a pick. That was a smoke. Never mind. Cynic runs into B wills quite literally, or rather IDK mows him down. B wills at a balcony. Will swing on to pay some mobs coming in from lane as well. Bomb will go down. 1v1 on site. Cynic has the angle. 6 to 5. Maluk again. Head and shoulders above everybody else on team 1, though. It worked on Nuke. Might be a little bit of a problem here on Inferno. Yeah, we're starting to see the, these mistakes from Team 1, and this is why, like, on this map, they're not the strongest. I mean, for Gaming Gladiators, they're climbing back in. Team 1 are just making some of these critical mistakes. Their timings are a little bit off. It almost seems like their comms can be a, a second too late. We've seen some players that overpeak when they shouldn't. Going for the plays when they shouldn't be. So I'm going to have to see what they can do. Pistols on the board now. Deep apartments control. Carson's starting to sniff things out. He's going to be able to find one. And now TRK looking to see what he can do. It's a little bit of a tag. It's not going to be much, but they're going to be the ones bagged. And there you go. We have ourselves back to a tie game. Just like that. Just like that, indeed. No kills for Team 1. Flawless for Game and Gladiators. Overpass is our decider if we do get there, and Game and Gladiators are making a case for it. They could have a much bigger lead. They could very easily have a much bigger lead on this map. They've had some interesting decisions, some interesting calls that have led to this 6 6. This could very easily be a 9 3 right now in the favor of the Game and Gladiators. So, if you're just joining us, the score isn't really telling the full story on this map anyway. Map 1 was close, though, so we can expect a very close series throughout the entire night. Again, what's at stake for Team 1? They win. They're in playoffs. They lose. They're in the relegation tournament. Game and Gladiators, they win. They don't have to play relegation, but they don't make playoffs. So, it's about as mediocre lukewarm as you can get. But not having to play through relegation is a very good thing in and of itself. It's the best thing besides making it into playoffs. It's actually harder to make it into that number five spot and not have to play relegation or get relegated than it is. It's the hardest spot to make because there's only one in each group. It's not the spot you want, but hey, it's better than nothing. It's better than going to fight relegation. Cynic though, timing to buy Maluk. 
Smoke going in. Game and Gladiators do not need to commit to this, though. George is looking for a pick. Carson could get caught out here. He's been heard by Maluk. He's definitely cleaned out those ears. He's got all the sound he needs. And Jasmine running through the flames. Okay, IDK might need to take a bit of his IGL's advice. Maluk comes back, though. Grabs his 20th of the game. And B-Will's in a 1v3. He had a couple rough 1vx's back on Nuke. Maybe this time he can be the hero. Yeah, a lot of pressure building up for him. 20 seconds left. He's got that bomb. He's got a smoke, but the positioning here, double CTs. Now they got the position. Kesa finds him. B-Will's with one. There it is. And it's going to be team one now. Put themselves back in the lead position, but we cannot ignore Maluk. Look at this. 20 kills. And Pace is the only other player that has double digits. He's two times more than Pesadello. It's insane. And Maluk is just doing these plays. Like, again, that last round alone. Round number 13, he just peeks middle once, gets a kill. Then he goes again when he hears the sound cue for the molly being thrown out and gets another kill, which is the bomb dropped. Maluk is trying to make a massive statement, but he's not going to be able to now that overaggression finally bites him. And it's going to be IDK to get the trade back, so a little bit of retaliation, sure, that's fine. And that's going to be taking down Cynic. And now Team 1 have lost their heavy hitter. They have lost a heavy eater, but look at B-Wills now moving around. IDK, good pop through the smoke, could do some damage here as he's going to pick up the bomb. But Carson will trade it back, 3v3, TRK and Pit. This is the time when he still might have the kill, never mind. George will finish him off. Good headshot coming in there from George. Malves and Pesadello going to try and make their way back through. Bomb going to, and never mind, they're going to save. Inferno A site plan. What am I thinking? They have no money. Seven to seven. This could be a half in the favor of the game and gladiators going to their CT side. That actually is not a bad spot at all to be, and that could work very, very nicely. Yeah, they gotta save this too, and no reason for the gaming gladiators to go for the hunt either, so I'm glad they're not committing to this or trying to look for it. So this is smart. Right back to an even game. But this is, again, this is where Team 1, we're seeing some of these technicalities. I mean, the fact that we even see TRK, he was in Big Pit, he tries to go on bike, the timing's just off. Like, and that's the thing we've noticed from Team 1 on the CT side is, it's not like they're doing necessarily, like, wrong setups. It's just the way their timing has been, and that's kind of been the gaps that Gaming Gladiators now brought this back to an even game. And we're on the last round of the very first half, and it's kind of a moment to see who can take the King of the Hill for the time being. And now the monies are all just going to be depleted. TRK has to force the scout. The MP9 purchase Maluk with a 5-7. Oh, boy. Oh. You're surprised. Like, I'm surprised he doesn't uh, get given a rifle the way he's playing. Give him a rifle. Yeah, give him the rifle. Out of any, but it's like the old Zeus thing when he would buy the AK and drop Simple Ad Eagle. It's the same sort of concept. Their IDK goes running. Goes a little too aggressively. Wasn't satisfied. He is punished for his greed. Pesa get... Malb's actually boosted up there. Malb takes a lot of damage, but he does win that fight only for a meantime, though, just for a little bit. Line up! But no, George. Little double swing there. Works out well. Bomb going to go down to the B site, and what do they have to fight for the retake with? A nade, two flashes, a Molotov, a 5-7 scout. And, well, they're not quite halfway there, but they certainly are living on a prayer. That nade... We'll do a good amount to Cynic, actually, so maybe, ready or not, they're going to give it all that they've got. Molotov going to go in towards Dark. Oh, I love this Molly. That's so good. It's not going to flush anybody out, but it's one less angle they have to clear. TRK is going in. Pillar hold from George is nice. Maluk with a great headshot, though. 1v2 now, but time, it's gone. There's no kid either. It's over. There's no way he wins this round. Gaming Gladiators don't need to peek. They don't need to swing. 8 to 7 is going to go their way. And Laz, if you went into this map the way that Team 1 started too, were you expecting this to end at an 8 7 in favor of Gaming Gladiators? No, I, I definitely didn't. I was going to be satisfied if they got 6. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was not expecting this kind of a scoreline with this kind of a map. And the way that even Team 1, the fact that they were still able to get themselves a decent amount of rounds, that was a close half. Again, I know I'm repeating myself, but just those some of those technical issues, a little bit on their side, some adjustments needed. But either way, a nice one-round difference for the first half. And 
Now the question will be if Gaming Gladiators are going to be uh, the shining knights, you know, that we've seen them on CT side. They are no, no strangers to this map, especially on those CT sides. Yeah, they'll be polishing up that armor. They'll be mounting their horses and ready to charge into half number two. We'll take that break, folks. Stick around. it you wear it what's your style get your merch at shop.esogaming.com Dropping right back into Inferno. It's pistol round half number two. Game and Gladiators won the T side, and they go to a very strong defense. Team one have a lot of work to do to make their way into this 2-0 score line. If they are able to do it, it would be huge for them. A win for Team One would get them into playoffs. A loss sends them into the relegation tournament. I'm Boggs, joined by Laz and Jacob Happen, our producer. Laz. Team one, if they lose this pistol, I think overpass is all but a guarantee at this point. Yeah, they've been pretty good at the pistols. B Wills goes for the fight, but he's not able to find anything. Carson's still in the back. Jazz is able to get a kill. Whoa, okay. Flick of an eye and he's gone. Three on three now. TRK low. Bomb finally gets planted. Maluk needing to win this fight. He needs to take out and isolate this part. Oh my god, he takes it with a jumping shot. Jeez. He's not able to make it easy. He's got to make it more difficult for himself. Yeah, he likes to make it difficult. He likes to make it spicy. And it's all coming down to the retake here. Cynic jumping in. Looking for something. Does run into TRK. Time is running out, though. Jasper has to hop on the bomb. He's not getting body blocked. Never mind, Cynic! That is disgusting. Just sprays away with the Glock and gets a pair of headshots. Rings the bell, and that's going to be the first pistol round for the game and Gladiators converted. And it comes at a time which could just bankrupt Team 1 in this map. Although, Bomb Plant, they're going to force. They lose this, though. Wait, are they just going to half? They're just going to half. Interesting. Interesting call. 
I don't mind this. I, don't I mean, either. team, they're they're men. Team one is no strangers to a deagle, so you know what? I'm all for it. Get get the deegs out. See what they can do. Oh boy, not like this. Don't just run down banana. You got a bunch of Molotovs to worry about. Hang yeah, I on, think they wanted oh, to become pizza. barbecue. Oh man, it's a barbecue, and not for them. Oh boy. Oh no. This went from from worse to worse. Oh. What? Whoa, whoa, TRK, okay. I wish I could do that. Right? Just Deagle spam the smoke, leave with a headshot. Call it a day's work. He still could do a little bit more, though. He's not quite on break just yet. He hasn't punched out. B wills in towards log, spots the gun barrel of Maloof's Deagle, gets tagged down low. Lineup! Collateral with the MP9. Never thought I'd see that. But it happened. That's a, you can chalk that one off your Counter-Strike bingo right there. MP9 collateral. Oh, yes. And B-Wells, too. Getting a little bit of redemption for what he can do. Yeah. He's a solid player. Today's performances have not really live in, lived up to his usual standards. 100% agree. That's just the beauty of Counter-Strike. Those moments where it just does not go your way. Look at that now nade damage. That is really good nade damage. Bit of a default situation. The three players down banana. They're trying to obtain this car control. It's been costly here. Lots of utility has been disposed of. And now we have the rotate coming in. B Wells is actually making his way through CT. So now it's going to be a four player stack towards A. Leave me at just the anchor of Carson now at B. Bomb still dropped in the back of T-Ramp. I mean, way deeper than T-Ramp. So, again, they're just feeling it out. This is a bit of a default tip for Team 1. Trying to find a pick. Trying to find something. b Wolves could get flashed through here. Could go through the smoke. Try and catch somebody up close and personal. Cynic over towards Blaine, though. That's a good opener. TRK swings into Boiler. And he will boil Cynic alive. Well, headshot, but end result. Cynic's gone. Cynic's dead. 4v4 and a decent amount of time, but out they go dry now as the smoke has faded. Jaspim and B-Wolves combine for two. The bomb is down. They know where it is. Jaspim on one HP is still doing a good job of distracting. Pace is going to cross and not even a death for Jaspim. Mob's down to 10 HP. Recovers the bomb, but can he recover the round? That's the better question. He's up the stairwell now through Boiler and in towards Apartments. Nobody's exactly watching his position. George is in towards Pit, though. Could catch him as he jumps out. Time is low as well. 14 on the clock. And taken down to 9 HP. Drops down off the hate card. George will add a little bit more. Grab the AK on sight. And a successful anti-bonus round. AKs for all three. And the rifle saved in the M4. That's some good communication there from Game and Gladiators. To be able to get all the rifles out of that situation. Yeah, it really is a good situation. The money really didn't have to get spent, so this is good for them, especially the later rounds if things start not go in their way and Team 1 starts picking things back up. He goes back out one more time. Double HEs with one smoke. We'll have to see what they do a little bit differently. The nade just lands in front of both Mobs and Pesa, but a bit of a counter utility comes in. B Will's down to 31. So he's already been crunched a bit too. They got the crutches out. They're hurting a little bit. Now the bracket control here for Team 1. Right back to this. They're doing a good job of just burning that utility from Gaming Gladiators. They're trying to do what they can, the Luke! Oh my god, a one shot. Now they got some control. One shot, one kill. Maul, Luke, he just popping off. Will not be able to finish up B-Wills, though. IDK, though, okay, Ota. Not gonna get another one. Mobs will swing around. Body shot with the Deagle. Four, or 3v2, excuse me, there. But whatever the case, it's a man advantage for Team 1 on the pistols. And B-Wills is just about in the red. He's a one shot to the chest, to the stomach, and obviously to the head. His nade could do some damage, though. How will he use it? That could finish off IDK. No, it doesn't connect onto him. He's stuck in the dark cubby and he's gonna stay alive just a little bit longer good flash bing buys a little more time carson flashing in for game and gladiators in the smoke is idk carson will s save no carson way will save this. they're saving they're saving they kind of have to honestly they don't have much option to get back in don't want to lose why is carson still there he's getting exa kills duh it's important 300 dollars bonus but a uh, deagle round that's going to be able to pick up T1 
team ones. Is that the first, second round? This half? It's the first round of the half. First round of the half. All right, and just like that, snap your fingers. You got an op. You got full AKs. The very important round. 19 under loss bonus going to be activated here for Gaming Gladiators. 24 for Team 1. Maluk, the big hitter. 24 and 14. Looking to see if he can get himself closer to that 30. Carson. He makes it work. It's not the cleanest kill we've seen from him, but it'll definitely do now. And they're already losing mobs. That's a big loss here for Team 1. That's a huge loss. They've also lost Pace and Maluk's down to 4. They're hemorrhaging players. Game and Gladiators furiously hunting for that 12th. And Carson's going to go a little more aggressive. Just sit down towards Logs. Fade away now with the A1S out of apartments. Jazz Pimple finish off IDK. Maluk is low. DRK just jumping around. This could be a save for Team 1 now. It has to be. This has to be a save. They have no control. Maluk's yep. down to four. They have no money. Like, again, they, they have to keep these guns. It, it, it's, like, with that op, that's got to be the hands. It's the holy grail of the ops. You lose that, you're going to have a bad time. It's going to be a difficult way for them to get back to that. Maluk's cooled off, though. And as he's cooled off, Game and Gladiators have put more and more rounds on the board. I think there was a point in time Maluk was like 20 and 4. I think so. Oh, and look at this. Oh, they're hunting. Oh, TRK. Oh, what? my goodness. He loses the fight. So now Maluk, he's done. Oh, unless he can do something, but he's got nine seconds. He will not be able to. The SWAT team hits the house, and now it's 12 of 8. No money left here, and I guess we'll see the Deagles out possibly one more time. Tech 9 will be used. A hero AK comes in from Mobs, but that puts him right near that kind of 2,000 mark here with his teammates, so they're going to work around him. Yeah, and if Mobs was playing up to his usual caliber, I would say this is a very scary round. Gaming Gladiators have to be careful, but Mobs is actually tied for bottom of the scoreboard on his team. This is not the usual Mobs performance. He was a bit quiet on Nuke, and he's even more quiet here on Inferno. And that's a big question mark, too. Team 1, they called in the standard. They called in the sub of Mobs. He has not delivered. Not yet. That is true, not yet. There is still his time. But that time's running out. He's got to show up and make his delivery soon. He's got to show up on the kill feed. He's got to make something happen here for Team 1. But George and B-Wills, two kills for him, rotating in from Speedway. It's going to be a mop-up. Team 1, nothing to do. Just a little bit of damage on a Jazz pin. Maluk, coming in late. Last alive. Flawless victory for Game of Gladiators. Five rounds separating the two teams, and... Eye up again for Team 1, but this map is quickly fading into obscurity for the overpasses where they'll have to pitch their final battle. Tough situation to be in. Team 1, we just haven't seen them really explore the playbook. They haven't, you know, opened up the strategies. Again, they just, they find these default situations that are not working for them. In Gaming Gladiators... They're starting to get a lot more confident. Maluk already taken down to 10. He's trying to, again, just getting these kills as much as he can for his team. But they're starting to read him. They're starting to take him out with the tranquilizers. <laughs> Utility's quite low as well for team... Bruh. Carson <laughs> blocks the HE that says, Hey, take my nades. I don't need them. You can go throw them. Just take my nades. It's a good teammate. Yeah, you know, just blocks your HE, gives you the nades, and then takes them back. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? It's a little bit of a juggling session over at the B site. Yep. You hear the circus music in the background? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, the flash comes in. B-Wills. Okay. There we go. 
But I like it. B. Wills is trying to get some information. Now Carson has to hold this down. Cynic getting closer. Oh, no, Team 1. Oh, no, Team 1. What are you doing? They're just going through smokes. They're fully blind. And they're just getting destroyed through it. Oh, a combination of 52 HP. The bomb's going to be picked up fine. That's okay. Maluk gets the arch control. But he hasn't been able to find anybody at all. Gaming Gladiator is now on the full rotate back. The bomb. There's no time. There's no time. I was just going to say he's going the longest way possible, but he's just going to have to save. And Luke now realizing as well, there's no point for this. There is no point at all, man. Over on Banana, sent a cop to this tractor because he was farming. Jeez. He took him for a ride on his big green tractor. That was a nice little spray down from Cynic. Bails out Carson. He's going to go for the op too, Les. He's going to pick up the big green. I don't blame him. We haven't seen it very much from Gaming Gladiators. I don't know what the strategy has been. I don't know if there's been a bit of a talk about this. But they've adjusted, and now uh, we'll see Cynic out. Oh, my. Well, you said Cynic's not the... Uh, Strongest stopper, and I guess he doesn't really get to show it here. Jazz now going to see what he can do. He does one a little bit better. Picks up a kill. Rotating all the way back. Bomb still making its way into the A site. Now it's pushing into lane. Ooh. Maluk's able to find one other kill. Make it a double! And it's going to be Maluk now finding more. And now George on top of the patio, and he's just going to get annihilated. And now the bomb will finally get planted. And we see a round that comes through for Team 1. They have picked up their second round. Of this second half. I, I, it's their I first in a while. That. I was trying to figure out how long it's been. It's been a while. I, It's just been gaming gladiators round after round after round. I don't remember when Team 1 last won around, to be honest. I can't remember how long it's been. It's been a it's while. It's just, it's been a while. The return. Team and 1. Who's the hero? It's Maluk. It's Maluk. He's at 28 kills now, Les. He got triple. He got a triple kill this round to make them win a round. Yep. So I think that's saying something. And, and, and this isn't the same Team 1 that we know. Like, we talked about it on the pre-show. We're like, yeah, mobs? Mobs, 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 mobs. Nope. Apparently it's Maluk now. But you cannot just have one player picking up all the heavy lifting. Everybody needs to contribute. And that's what we talked a lot about here for Gaming Gladiators. Everybody's close. I think Carson's the only player that I would put like on the lower end here, but that's not normal for Carson. The fact that his team is still relatively close in the kill frag distribution, that's fine. Well, let's see if they can pull it back. There's still an opportunity. There's no 16 on the board yet for Gaming Gladiators, and they haven't even gotten to 15 yet. So there is an opportunity. A little bit of nade damage being dealt, though, onto the Team 1 side. Maluk down to 75, 78 for Mobs, 89 for Pesa. Bomb down T-Ramp as well. George takes a little bit of damage, too. Just nothing really happening in the early going of this one. We're getting to the midway point of the round now. A flash goes into middle. But nobody's peeking from the game in Gladiators. They're trying to let Team 1 walk into the crossfires, walk into the deadly angle set up by the CT side. He wills. This molly can delay nicely. It can help out. Smoke goes out from Carson, who also does have an incendiary. This is not a bad hold set up here for Game and Gladiators, especially the molly combo with a nade for B wills. Flash as well. You can buy a lot of time for the rotations. Time is something that Team 1 are starting to run out of, too. 35 on the clock, a smoke going in, counter molly, counter nade coming through, flash being going to get thrown as well, TRK taking a little bit of damage, Carson still has another flame to throw, he's going to chuck it down, now they're going to have to go through it, they are going to burn a little bit more, Carson through the smoke has one on a plate, and TRK down to six mobs to 22, nade from B-Wills, ready to fly, it's going to do a little bit more, down stops the bomb plant, TRK falls, and through the smoke, Carson swings, one more kill, Maluk and mobs, a pair of M's, but time is out, out. Can they plant the bomb? Five, four, they just have enough time. Mobs has come up with another headshot. The smoke keeps Maluk alive. He's being jiggled peak, but not taken down yet. Up banana comes Jazz Pimp. 1v2 for Maluk out towards New Box. Stuck in the angle. Finished off by Jazz Pimp. 15 9. And Game and Gladiators looking for their. 
or their own map. Well, we see Mob Shine. He does a little bit of the Bulbs faction, but it's just not enough. And now we're at map point for Gaming Gladiators. And Team 1 now. Everything on the line here. A very long road ahead of them. Six rounds to get themselves to a tie game to push over time, whereas we just need one more to go to the overpass. Cynic does have that op out again. He hasn't been successful with it so far on Inferno. Taking one more crack at it. Coach is going to let him do it. Deep mollies, deep nades coming in. Not able to find a kill. Not able to do the damage it needs. Bomb drop now. Team 1. Obtaining car control. Going for the deep smoke. That will block off Cynic, so that's a good placement smoke. So now they get the mid bracket. But when they get this bracket control, we don't see them get the control they want. Like, I mean, they're not really executing it properly to, to get that site control. Yeah, and if you look at how far removed the bomb is, too, it's going to take them a long time to even get the objective object in towards the site. So, Game and Gladiators can just buy more time. They're going to get phased here. Cynic's just going to back away, flashed off, retreat towards the Cold Zero Arch angle. Actually, he's playing really passive. He's let one by. IDK could get finished off, though. Nice pick. Still has to be very wary of Pesadella, who swings to the smoke and picks up George. George has to be mad about that. That's a con that needs to be made by Cynic. George should not be hung out to dry there. Still 15 to 9. Game and Gladiators, not much to argue about yet, but now things could get a little worse. Cynic one more, runs out of space and time. Bomb going to go down, rotation coming in from the B-side, B-Will's very close, could get caught up by Pesa though, it's a yin-yang around in towards the library, good flashbang, B-Will's dash is back, he's going to be hunted, does not, I think he has to know there's somebody towards the library, yeah, he's clearing it out, he's waiting for the peak, Pesa's just sitting behind the wall, holding an eye on the angle, he has Maluk trained, so even if B-Will's tried to go through the other library door and not through CT spawn, He's going to fall to Maluk anyway, so that's a good crossfire setup from Team 1. Bomb's going to detonate 10 rounds for Team 1. But the money should still be good enough to suffice a full buy for Game and Gladiators. At the very least, Jasmine has quite a bit of cash. George should be able to buy up as well. Somebody just needs to drop Cynic. That'll be good. He will we'll get one more. Survive. Goes forward. That's the op. He can save the op. That's massive. Oh... It just these mis oh these mistakes that we see from team one they just give it up they need to keep that op in there and they lose it they don't even have the funds to purchase one that they want oh boy cynic now gets it again Let's see what he can do with it three players gonna go towards banana this time here from the gaming gladiators Team one right back to the default situation getting the banana control actually will throw double he to get any damage they can find, but it will be Pesadello eaten alive. He's got the pin right in the face. Now they're throwing a bit more utility, throw a little bit of a fake, and Cynic's actually biting on this somewhat. He's actually made his rotation some kind of positioning, but actually he will fall back on this. Team 1 going for the A site again, Boggs. They've had some success, so it makes sense to go back for it again. Cynic's playing very passive all the way back, Spigot too. He doesn't want to really fight for this, he wants to just hold. Flashes in towards Bracket, a lot of noise being made. George playing anti-flash, going back, dodges if they're going to jump out, but George still has one, sprays away for a second. Maluk's got towards side, but he's going to be harangued. George swaps guns to the AK, drops, has nades, but Jasmine keeps him alive. Smoke out, Jasmine and George trying to make this one a W. George with another, Jasmine with a third, and that's going to be all she wrote for Team 1 on this 